So in this video, we are going to go over how to write GraphQL queries, and we're going to do that in the API Explorer, which you can find inside your ApeBase workspace. Let's jump right into it. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial and actually write this exact same queries um, that I'll be writing, you can do so by running through the first five steps of our Quick Start app. If you go to docs.apebase.com slash getting started slash quick start, uh, you'll be able to find this tutorial. And um, like I said, just the first five steps, and that will set up your workspace to have the exact same tables that I have defined as well as the same seed data that I imported. So once you have your workspace set up or if you just want to follow along, uh, jump into the workspace and go over to the API Explorer, which you'll see in your left side menu. This is where we're going to be for the rest of this video, just to show you how to write uh, two types of queries. One is a list query and the other is a table or a record specific query. So one of the really cool things about ApeBase is that Whenever you create or update a table, we will generate or update the GraphQL resources that you need to perform CRUD actions on that table. What does that mean? So for example, so first off what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all these comments right here so we can jump in and get started writing queries. Right, so I'm just going to type in query, give it curly braces. And before I get in, because I'm a little bit familiar with the domain, what I want to show you is if I jump over here to screen right and I open up the documentation explorer, right, this is a introspection tool that will allow us to jump in and look at all the different types of queries, mutations, and subscriptions that we have defined and we can use when writing our GraphQL statements, right? So for right now, in this application, we have brokers, we have properties, listings, all these different types of um, table resources that you could think of as being part of, let's say, a real estate uh, management application, right? So I'm going to look at the broker resource. And you can see that I have broker and broker list. These are the two types of GraphQL queries that I have defined for it. So broker, I'd have to pass an ID to because it's looking at a specific broker. However, we're going to look at broker list for now and query a list of results. So you can see that we bridged out of the box. You have filtering, you have um, ordering, pagination, all these different things that you can use to help shape the, uh, shape the response that, that you want to get. So if I jump in my query and I type in broker, you can see that we have a little bit of autocomplete going on here, or broker's list, excuse me. And just to get going, I'm just going to say, okay, for my broker's list, each item that it returns, I want the ID and the nickname of the broker. So I'm going to run that query, and the result pops up right here. You can see we got a lot of duplicate nicknames for our brokers, right? So I'm just going to delete the nickname property, and I'm going to jump in here and say, that, okay, well, for every broker, what I really want is I want their listings. And what I want for their listings is the count or the number of listings they have. And then for each listing item, I want what's on that listing. I want the status and the price cool i'm going to run that query and as you can see for every broker we have the broker id then for each broker we have their listings the number of listings they have as well as the status and price of that listing so what this just demonstrated is how easy it was for us to write a relational query and get back exactly the information that we're looking for and once again the power of this is knowing that you could actually do this from a client application. So if you were developing a mobile app or any type of front-end application, you would write this query there, execute it, and then get back the information that you're looking for, which is very different, um, as I'm sure you can recognize, than what you would expect from a REST API. And so let's actually get a little bit more granular on this. So here, what we're gonna say, okay, well, we only want brokers who, and we're gonna do a filter here, we want brokers whose nickname um, contains, oh, excuse me, so contains, and then just give it the letter A, right? So in this example, we are actually have a shorter list of brokers because it's only returning ones whose name contains with the letter A. And we can actually add this type of filtering at multiple levels of the relational query. So for example, if here I wanted to do, or let's say that I wanted to order the, um, if I wanted to order 
the listings, let's do autocomplete, by price ascending. Cool, do that. And now the prices have been ordered in ascending order. Once again, we are just changing and shaping this query as we want it to be. And what's really cool is we can even go a deeper level down into the query. What do I mean by that? So right now we're starting at the brokers, which has which are related to listings, but listings also have relations. And so if for every listing we wanted to say, okay, who is the seller of this listing? And for that seller, we want the user that that seller belongs to. Right, again, this is domain specific, but you get the idea. And we want their first name and their last name. Check that out. So from the top level, we're getting our list of brokers. For every broker, we're getting all their listings. We're getting an aggregator that's counting them. And then for each listing that we have, we are having the status, the price, that's in ascending order. And then we are getting the seller, which belongs to a user, and the user's first and last name. That is super cool. And so what we're going to do now, right, because I think that demonstrates a really um, good overview of some of the powerful things that you can do when you're creating uh, list queries, right? And then, of course, as you know, you can just dump into the Documentation Explorer over here and get a deeper or get a better look at all the different arguments that you can pass and how to use them. Let's just look at really quickly how you do a specific query for a specific record. And so if I were to jump back here, I'm just going to delete all this stuff inside. And I'm going to say, instead of looking for a broker list, I just want a specific broker. And I'm going to pass it the ID as an argument. And then on this broker, what I want to do is I want to have it, or have it return the nickname of the broker. And I want to see the brokers, once again, listings, build something similar to what we just had, but for a specific record. And what else do we got? For every listing that we have, we want the, we had the, buy, the seller before, we want the buyer, and we want the buyer's purchases, and we want the number of purchases that the buyer had. Boom, just like that, right? So once again, we could just keep going and playing here, but I think this gives you a very good overview of all the different types of queries and how flexible the querying interface is when you're dealing with GraphQL. What I'm jumping over here is just to the broker query itself. So you can see that, okay, well, these are the fields that you would have on the broker, as well as in the relationships that you can then uh, filter, sort, paginate through, whatever you need to do. Um, but know that for every single table you create within your workspace, all these types of calls are being automatically managed for you so that when you define them, they're ready to go right out of the box. Um, I hope that you found this video valuable. And if you're looking forward to staying up to date with future videos, please subscribe to the channel using the links below. And if you have any questions about some of the stuff that we went over, feel free to drop it in the comment section and I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as possible. All right, have a great rest of your day and looking forward to seeing you in future videos.